I'm in a good mood. And I'm in a good mood because Brian Curtis is joining us. From The Ringer, you can check out his podcast on Brady, The Debate, the Press Box. I was listening to this morning, preparing, and he's just a great dude to talk to. So what is up, my friend? It's good to see you, Ryan. It's been a while. Yeah, it has. Uh, anybody that knows me knows that if I don't talk to you that often when I call, you're probably going to get a three-minute segment off the top of the call. I'm aware of it, but I know it's not the greatest attribute, you know, things I'm trying to work on. Um, but Curtis gets those calls and be like, okay, hold on. And then you, you know, you just have to lay out for like the first three minutes. So I'm going to, uh, let you go here first. Uh, I want to get to Brady. I want to start there. The simplest way to ask is what did you think? And then we'll go from there. The thing I was most disappointed in was that for most of that game, he sounded like Tom Brady, the quarterback standing behind a podium, answering a question from the beat guy at the Herald. It never got into that level of analysis we were promised, which is looking inside Tom Brady's brain. And it really started, I'm sure you were watching this game, Texas, Michigan on Saturday. He comes on at halftime with Joel Klatt and Klatt asked him about Micah Parsons and Miles Garrett, two guys Brady played against. Micah Parsons sacked Brady in his very last game as a quarterback. And Brady had this very, very generic answer that again, he could have given during a press conference when he was a player. It's almost like he was trying to be unquotable, which is not the job of being an announcer. And that to me was the biggest disappointment that the performance stuff fitting in those little 10 second windows, I can deal with that. But I was a little surprised that he didn't get deeper and he wasn't more interesting during the broadcast. Would you agree that he almost, I thought he was nervous. I mean, it was yes. weird to think of Tom Brady, but you're in a different element. Everybody's watching. There's been this, I've, we've never had a buildup for a color commentator like this. I mean, we've known about this for such a long time. So there's a lot of anticipation. He's probably feeling that. And then it's real and it's just about reps. And so somebody that was the opposite of that as a player to see him in this setting where, and I would like to think that I have a little bit more of a read on it only because of doing the job where you can kind of tell where somebody's just off a little in the beginning. Uh, that's where it started. And it was funny listening to you on the podcast. You were talking about him as an announcer, as if he was the quarterback. It was like third series, you know, kind of got into a rhythm, <laughs> settled in a bit. <laughs> and I was thinking of the, the parallels of like, we we're talking about him as the broadcaster. However, I, I don't think it was as bad as maybe it's being made out to be. And the fact that I would imagine he's just going to get better at it because he's a really smart person. It's not as bad as it's being made out to be. It was fine. You know, we do this with announcers, right? You are the best announcer in the history of the world, or you're the worst announcer in the history of the world. And Tony Romo has actually visited both of those places within a period of five years. So I start to get suspicious when we say you're the best of the worst. And like, to me, it was, Again, to go back to the football thing, it was like rookie quarterback. It was first game. It was looking around the defense with big wide eyes, except he's looking into his telestrator and be like, I have 10 seconds to talk. Is that right? Uh, am I going to have to just stop this thought midstream and let KB go and call this play? You know, that's what it felt like. I think, you know, you get to week like three or four. That's when you should really start to see something like what they wanted. I mean, that, that to me, if I didn't see it by that point, if it was like this, then I would be, start to get nervous. As somebody that, you know, in the building, like I had at, at ESPN, where the high profile former athlete comes in and everybody's really excited. It's like, okay, we, we've got a hall of famer here and he's going to be at the desk. And then you watch the pregame show and you go, oh my God, <laughs> like this is this is a disaster. Okay. Now there are some people that get better. Um, but there's also people like it's a, it's a weird job because I think it's, I think it's hard to be great. And I think it's really easy to be awful. And this is a little different because you're the number one broadcast team immediately on Fox. I'm convinced half the guys that wanted to come into Bristol to do some studio stuff. We're just thrilled to kind of get out of the house and then still be on TV. So I don't know that they cared about the job as much as we're all led to believe that Brady cares about the job. Cause I could just tell with certain people, I'd be like, oh, this guy doesn't care. Like he, he just doesn't care. He doesn't want to get better. He doesn't want to do it. He, he's just thrilled to kind of be in the mix here a little bit. 
Um, but there is there is this rush to assume because you're this amazing player with this this great resume that that's going to translate immediately to television. And I think that's just a a huge assumption that television is that easy, that it's it's that seamless. But I guess maybe we've seen it a few times. Maybe Romo is the example of where it felt seamless. But now you're right. It, it seems like his approval rating is completely different from where it was at the beginning, which is a really hard thing to do. It is. You know, the the skill to me was there's two things. One is like, do you have interesting things to say about football? We we can probably assume that the answer is yes for Tom Brady. Some athletes just don't. You know, they were awesome. They're brilliant at the game. And they just they just don't have it in them to talk brilliantly about yeah. the game. And I think the second skill is in can you watch a play and in that 10 second window, get that brilliant thought out of your head and out of your mouth. That that's the hardest thing. You know, like Troy Aikman, again, we love to pretend all these guys are exactly as they've always been. Troy Aikman's gotten a lot better at that over the course of 20 plus years in the broadcast booth. You know, I remember sitting in a booth with Joe and Troy and the striking thing is Joe is still calling the play and Aikman's already rewinding on his screen in front of him to figure out what happened. Like he's, he's already doing that. And the ball, the ball carrier has not been tackled, but he's going back, back, back to figure out what happened. What can I say? And you know, that's just like a hard mechanical act to do. So just imagine Tom Brady in there. He doesn't have, you know, what Aikman had, which was games in Europe. He doesn't have what Olsen had. Olsen called games when he was still a player, called a bunch of XFL games that we've now completely forgotten. He's basically in there for the first time, minus a few practice games. And he's got to go and go, huh, 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 go, go back, let me go back, figure it out, and then get it out of his mouth. And that's why you heard Kevin Burkhart that whole game just trying to pull it out of him, right? Set him up, set him up, set him up. It wasn't quite Tarico with Drew Brees or that playoff game where he had the shock paddles and he was trying to like bring Drew Brees to life during the game. But Burkhart was like, I, I, I just got to ask him, right? Is zone defense or man defense? What did you prefer? I'm just going to pull the material out of him while he gets used to the speed of the game. Yeah, the man zone thing was a really like instinctive thing from Burkhart. Like I re- remember hearing that being explained and, and thinking, okay, you know, I know, I know what he's trying to do here because Brady, like nobody's going to feel bad for Tom Brady. You, you walk, but he does walk into kind of a perfect storm of events here. It's a massive contract. It's a ten years, three hundred seventy-five million. I don't know if that's yep. one of those weird NFL contracts. Uh, I don't think those. I think they're a little different in television. <laughs> You're replacing Greg Olson, who immediately became kind of everybody's favorite, and then I think Olson got a bump because of all of us being aware that he was then going to get replaced. We're like, how great is this guy? He's terrific. We've had him on. He's great on the Super Bowl. He has a rawness to him, too, that works. Um, and then he's just on top of everything as well. And then there was, I don't know that I've ever seen this before. When the Brady commercial started with all the different versions of Brady talking to present day Brady and then young Brady looking at Tom Brady, I, I was expecting like, and at Goldman Sachs, you know, like what, which ad is this? And I, I, and it was like, this is an ad for him, the broadcaster. And let's face it. People just don't like that. People don't like, so you add all of these things together into the equation. And if he wasn't brilliant, it was going to be rough for him. So the thing that producers say, sometimes they say, we get a new guy in the booth and he's just talking. Greg Olson, when he got in the booth, he was just talking. Tony Romo, 2017, like he didn't know the rules. Remember, he's like, am I supposed to stop talking when the snap happens? Am I supposed to hand it over to Nance? And producers love that because there's like a natural quality to it. You're not repeating the cliches that you've heard your whole life. Because some of these guys get in there and they're like, oh, I'm supposed to talk like an announcer. Let me give you like the 10 dumbest things that an announcer has ever said. The question with Tom Brady that's so fascinating to me is, has he ever been just talking in his life? For 20 plus years, has he ever had a moment outside of like with his family or with Don Yee or somebody where he can be like, I'm just speaking and I'm doing it loosely and I don't care what people think and I'm not too worried about it. Like, you know, he just may not have had that in his life in a way that Olsen and even Romo as quarterback of the Cowboys did. So so that's an interesting question too. Can he he tap that? Does that exist within Tom Brady? And I, I don't know the answer to that. Well, there was something that happened a few months ago that, that makes me think it could happen. Because when it was announced, I'm like, okay, 
you know, maybe, but it's probably a mistake to just assume the way we've assumed in the past, the way television programmers, the, the highest level executives have, have made big bets on people that are just famous and they're superstars. And I think television decisions default to the player resume and then they just hope they can figure it out. Right. I mean, would you agree with that? That it's especially it's, it's not. Yeah. Fox yeah. is like Derek but, Jeter is a famous Yankee. Derek Jeter needs to be on Fox and we'll figure out the announcing part. Yeah, but I mean, ESPN did it with Jason Witten. Yeah, but I mean, I think Fox is just another level. It's Big Poppy, it's Jeter, it's Brady, it's Aikman back in the day, right? They're just like, they're hunting the biggest of big stars. A-Rod, there you go. Yeah, okay. Um, But he was on with Cowherd, and I, I think this was a couple months ago, and Cowherd was trying to get him to say something about the relationship with Bill, okay? And I knew what Cowherd was doing. He, he wanted the soundbite of like Brady made him like, yeah, some days it was tough. And Brady took it and pivoted, but then explained the working relationship in that here's what I did. And he was incredibly specific. And he told this story about I would not go into a game where if we lined up against the defense and they gave us a look where I knew pre-snap, we didn't have an answer. And some other coaches would just go, hey, Credit to the defense on that one. They get the win. And he'd be like, no, I'm not, I'm not conceding the play because of the look ahead of time. We need some kind of adjustment. So let's go through every potential look here and let's make sure we're ready to have some sort of adjustment. So what he did was, one, he wasn't going to criticize Bill on Cowherd's show. But in pivoting, he told this incredible story that was like really interesting and gave you this depth. And also gave you another example of why Brady is so good at what he had done as a quarterback. I was like, okay, that's really good. Now, you can't do that for three hours on a game broadcast. But if you can give me like two, maybe three of those, that's where I think like the the mechanics of the plays, I assume he'll figure that out. But if you can give me a couple stories in that dead period, something like he did with Cowherd that day, like when I when I saw that clip, I went, all right, that's. That's really in depth. That's really interesting. That this proves perhaps maybe he doesn't just want to be the vanilla guy because at some point you're going to have to say some stuff. And it's fascinating because the great thing about New England is that everybody was on the same page because no one wanted to say anything. I totally agree. And if we go back to the quarterback metaphor one more time, the easiest plays you could call for Brady are half dozen times a game, dozen times a game. Start a sentence with "When I was playing, comma." And just do it. Yeah. And look, it can be an in-depth story like that. Like it, he could have told during the second half of that Cowboys Browns game, which is pretty terrible. It's he would have had some time. Right? He would have had some, some time. He, he could let that story go. But there were also moments like you remember there was a little moment where Deshaun Watson airmailed a pass out of the end zone. And Brady said something like, you know what? Every time I did that, my receivers yeah. and coaches would get on me and say, just throw it up there and give me a chance. And I was like, nope, I'm airmailing this thing. I'm not, you know, gonna introduce that five percent chance something weird's gonna happen and get the ball picked off. He didn't totally explain it fully, but there can be little moments like that where you're just like, oh, that's an interesting insight about playing quarterback. I didn't think about that. And I think that would make the whole thing a lot better.